Another very common area that you will be asked about is evolution and it's very hard to write clearly about it without getting muddled up. Lots of students write terminology like poor old Lamarck who was a French biologist whose idea was very good but he's been sort of rubbish throughout history. I feel a bit sorry for him. He was the one that said if a giraffe stretches its neck every day to feed on a tall tree that maybe the neck does get slightly longer and over many generations this is passed on to the offspring which is not too bad of an idea. If you do weights every day you do change your body but you don't pass that on to your offspring so that was his key mistake. So be careful you don't use his words like the bacteria grew resistant, became resistant developed resistance. That means in the lifetime of the bacteria and that would be wrong because of course you need to talk about Darwin who is my number one man and natural selection and so you need to say in the original population of bacteria there was already variation so you might have had a million bacteria that are the same and one different if that one difference was resistance to antibiotics, then that's a fantastic mutation to have. Most mutations, of course, are bad things, they don't help, but occasionally you'll get a new variation that's positive. And you would say they then survived, reproduced and passed on to their offspring. So over many generations, and in a bacteria that can just be 20 minutes, if the conditions are good and it's warm and there's lots of food and there's lots of moisture, you get a new generation every 20 minutes, you can easily end up with a whole species of resistant bacteria. Remember, if you're talking about patients and antibiotics, it's not you that becomes resistant, and don't use the word immune, it's nothing to do with immunity, it's the bacterial population. So try to not say the rabbit became resistant to myxomatosis, or the mosquito, say the mosquito population became resistant to DDT, which is what happened in the 40s. At first DDT was a fantastic pesticide to help with malaria, but very soon resistance evolved in the mosquitoes and it was then useless. Another area you will always be asked about is your practical work. So your first hand investigations, with a fancy name for experiment, they want to know that you actually did the experiment, not you read about it under a tree somewhere, but you actually did it. They might ask you to describe why you did it, your method, your equipment, the steps you took. They might ask you to justify, that's another verb, it means give really strong reasons. If I say, explain why you're late today, you might give me one simple reason. If I say justify why you should still be in this class if you're late every day for half an hour, that's much stronger. So you need to give good reasons. The word valid is often used. It begins with V. So I always think that if the question says valid, it's talking about variables. They also begin with V. So that's how I remember. It means, was it a fair test? So this is a really important word in science. So to be fair, for example, if, um, if you were someone who had pimples occasionally and you bought some new cream, you might think, oh, my skin is really good this week. It must be that cream. But if you also got more sleep that week and ate healthier food, had less stress because your exams were finished, then you're not really sure whether it was the cream, so it's not valid. Another important term is reliable. It begins with R, so I remember that it's all to do with repeats. So if you say that your bus is reliable, it means it comes at the same time every day. If you do an experiment many times, which is always a good thing to do, and take an average, it's more reliable if you get the same results. So they're two key terms that you should know. And you're often asked to design a new experiment, one that you've never seen before. So you need to know the scientific method, things like the aim, the equipment, and to make sure that you measure something. 
Another important area that you will be asked about is models. In science, we use a lot of models. Some of them you have made yourself. Some of them you might have just looked at. So for example, a DNA model, you might have just looked at this. You might have made one with different colored lollies or different colored pegs. And you might be asked, how did it help you to understand DNA? You might have looked at a model of a kidney, for example. And the question would be, how does looking at this help you understand rather than just reading about it in a book? So you might say it's in three dimensions, that it's an actual size with the adrenal gland on the top here. You probably did a kidney dissection, but hopefully you've looked at a model as well. You've also modelled meiosis, where you show what the chromosomes do, and that you might be asked to perhaps draw what you did. I always use a pencil and I label. Limitations of the model. How does this help me to understand DNA? It has limits because it's only a small section. Really, DNA is made of billions of these nucleotides. But you can say the benefits are it's 3D, it shows me it's a double helix, and I can see how the base pairs go together, like the rungs of the ladder. So get to know what models you've used in biology. So there's a lot of skills that you have to know. For example, if you look on the syllabus I was talking about, at 9.1 it's called, that has a list of all the skills. You need to be able to do a graph, you're often asked to do one. You need to often know the difference between a line of best fit or a column graph. Um, current Australian scientists that are practicing, you need to research some. So if you did communication, I think Professor Graham Clark is a really good one. He was the inventor of the cochlear implant or the bionic ear or maybe Professor Tim Flannery, who's now the climate change minister because he's such an expert on climate. And a female one, maybe you could talk about Dr. Fiona Wood, who developed that spray on skin for the barley bombing victims. So that saved people's lives. So there's some current practicing Australian scientists. If the question asks you about an African tribe, like the Yoruba tribe, and you think, I haven't studied that, it means it's a skills question. And in the table, there should be enough there for you to answer what they're asking. So if it's unfamiliar, don't worry, it's okay. And finally then, you should always finish within three hours. I don't know personally of any student that didn't. So you need to go back read over your work, add more information as long as it's not contradictory or wrong. So it's okay to add points. Presume that the examiner knows no biology at all, so tell them as if they're in year six. Make it really basic using some scientific language where possible. And if you can, try to write neatly. I know that's difficult for some of you, but it really helps if you are marking and you can't work out what this word is. You might try for a while, but it, it can get frustrating. So try to write neatly if you can. And I hope some of what I've said today is useful. And good luck. Thank you.